Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Uh, please let me know if uh, you have any problem from your side. Uh, as you see today we start our first, let us say, uh, Bible study. And uh, our channel here for those who they are new, actually all of you are new here, I mean because this is a new start. Uh, here we just study the Bible, there is nothing more, nothing less. We don't debate other religions, we have other channels for that. So if anyone have a questions about other religions, you have to save it for a different place and different location and different timing. Uh, as you see in the screen, uh, I choose to start with the book of John. And the reason uh, uh, I choose uh, in the Gospel of John uh, there is something special about it as all the Bibles have every one of them have something special but I find that the Gospel of John is uh, meant to be someone who have a high education in the same time for someone he's a farmer so it's inspired in a very unique way uh, and right away you will see how light and how heavy it is each one of uh, of the disciples he present to us the story of Jesus and Jesus teaching and this is the whole point of the gospel anyway but we need to remember that the church came first and then the gospel which mean people of the church then the gospel was written and which mean the gospel is written for the believers so there is you know there's a mindset in the in the gospel that's if i am talking to christian it's not the same if i'm talking to someone he is a buddha or atheist or etc so this book, all the Gospels, is written usually to Christians. Which means people who already they knew about Christ, they have a background, and they have a, a very good understanding of the Gospel. Yet, the book is written for them. I know that some of you have a questions about someone who says this, what is the meaning of that verse we did not start yet and let us not you know let's focus in the chapter we are going to read so we can really enjoy it and not to be disturbed by somebody saying someone said to me uh, forget about those things at least for now please let me know if my voice is not good or if ever my microphone have any problem because sometimes it does so I start with the, uh, John chapter 1, verse number 1, and you will notice right away something unique in this, uh, in this chapter. Very unique. You know, when, when you are a, a foreign person, you come to a different country, uh, you learn new language, right? But language is not just words. Language is a, is a background of history, and words can, one word can carry a story behind. So you can say sometimes something in a language, but you mean something totally else, have nothing to do with the word. So languages always is connected to the culture, to the nature of the people you are speaking to. Here, John, he is speaking to the Greek people. Greek people are very, very, you know, the Greek people, they have a very long history of philosophy. Philosophers. People who enjoy philosophy and logic and debates and they are not just, you know, like an average nation. They have uh, the biggest names of philosophers, 
So how we can talk to those people? And here you see that John, for sure inspired by the Lord, he conquered the heart of those who they are philosophers. He made them speechless. You see, when we read in English, we read always, you know, English words. Like as an example here, we see in the beginning, it was the word. And before we started, let's pray that the Lord will open the heart and people and eyes and make our uh, 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 tongue speak the truth and our heart receive it. And we pray that the Lord will make us understand His inspiration so we ourselves, we can be messengers for Him and we can explain it to others. I mean to that. So in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. But if you go in the Greek language, you will see that the word here is used is Logos. Logos is not a word, really, just a word, like word, word, you know, I say word, you say word, you know, we talk, word is talk, right? Here, this is not really a talking. We are talking about the word, which is God. In the beginning, it was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So this is God himself, but how can God can be, can be a word? Or word <clears throat> you know first of all how we recognize God anyway you know like how how we how we knew about God everything we knew about him is based in his words all the creation we have around us is based in his word and when you read John chapter 1 verse number 1 you will find yourself going right away to the book of Genesis. It's as you are reading Genesis in the beginning. In the beginning. So, in the beginning of everything, of life, of creation, not in the beginning of God, God does not have beginning and he has no end. So, in the beginning, the beginning for us, you know, our beginning, the beginning of the creation, the universe. There was the world. Which means, when God, he created everything, he created everything by his word. As in Genesis chapter 1, when God, he said, let be light. Light was. This is Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. John 1. In the beginning was the word. So the beginning of everything started with God. And God, who is the Word Himself, is the reason for everything to be created. And then you will see right away in verse number 2, it says, The same was in the beginning with God. All things was made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Again, as if you are reading the book of Genesis. But without the details, how God created, what was light, what was day, what was earth, what was water. Everything without him will not be exist. Everything and by him, everything came to existence. But going back to the word, because this is not just a verse we can skip and we say it is the Word. Here the Word present the will of God, present the, uh, you know, actually there's no words really to describe uh, uh, how, the, how the Word, uh, because we are talking about God Himself. Like, you know, I have will, but my will is not the same as God will. 
I have will to do things, but maybe I will be able to do it. Maybe I will not. Maybe I can accomplish it. Maybe I'm. I'm I, this is my will. You know, I, my will is to do this, but I'm not God. So my will is not an action. It's just a will. God words is not only will. It's an action with perfection, which means whatever he decided to be is going to be as he decided to be. So if God, he created Adam as a human to be whatever the human is, he created him with perfection as a human, which means whatever even defect we have, we, uh, we have it because God, he decided to give us that defect. Whatever perfection we have, because God, the will of God, decide to give us that perfection, if we have it. For sure, like the word perfection here is about like what is what we like about ourselves, and the defect is what about what we don't like about ourselves. But it's not us who decide, you know, what we like to have, what we don't like to have. It was the will of God. So here the word of God, which is God Himself. That when he wanted something to happen, that word is a decision, it's a making, it's a creation for everything. So that word create, that word make things happen, that word make decision and decision will happen immediately. It's not just a word. So here we have to distinguish between the normal uh, you know, use of the word word and the word here is used. So the Logos is the will of God, the thought of God, the mind of God, but it's an action of God which makes things come to be true. God created us as a defect, with defect, sure. Don't you get sick? Don't you die? This is defect, this is kind of defect. <laughs> you know why you think you are because if you don't have a defect then you are your god then yeah so but this is what the decision of god as an example when god he created adam and eve uh, he he gave them the defect as a penalty as an example death pain suffering so the defect came later as a decision from god so God, he can make you perfect when, you know, when he decides to make you perfect, and he can make you defect or have a defect as part of your design. It's not a, it's not a, a mistake. It's not a fault. It's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, like uh, God did not know how to make you in the best way. No, this is was a penalty, a punishment. So we suffer, we suffer as a penalty. Or we are sinners otherwise we will be in heaven this is why you when you go to heaven if you are a follower of Christ then you will have a new body and that body is with perfection because God decided to make you perfect so God decision is what going to decide what what you will be with perfection or without perfection so when a human being, he decides to obey God, you know, he gave you free will. But this free will, if it goes against God, then you receive a penalty. And the penalty of man, the one we have right now, is a temporary penalty. Which means you can come back to the Lord, and that's why the Messiah, he came. So the whole gospel actually is to tell us about the Messiah who is coming to save us because of what we did, because of our defect, let us say, which we choose him, by the way, because here God did not choose you to be a sinner. God you created you to be obedient, but you chose to be a sinner. So we brought defect to ourselves. We brought the penalty for ourselves and the punishment of death and sickness and suffering. But this is, will be temporarily. As soon as we go back to the Lord, we will be in different form as body, 
we will be relieved from our sin. This is why the Lord, he said, he and she, they will be the same like angels or angels. Which means he will release us from our needs. The nature will be a new nature. He and she, they will not get married. So what was before uh, a necessity, it was, it's not going to be a necessity no more. So the heaven in Christianity is releasing you from all the needs. You don't need needs. You don't have any needs. You are a child of God in heaven. And the happiness will have a very high level, let us say, of nobility. It's something we can't explain. It's the same, like now somebody might say to you, what does that mean exactly? I will be so happy in heaven. Well, you get happy if you won a lotto. And you go crazy. Can you describe that? You might go crazy. You get so excited if you have a child is born, but you can't explain to people what happened to you when you when you when you saw your son. This is an, this is a feeling nobody can describe except the person who experienced. So if God can give us all those things in this suffering earth, God can give us way more better happiness in His heaven. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But John here is, uh, uh, St. John is introducing to us, or to the Greek people, that all your philosophy, all your history of philosophy and logic, is going to be destroyed by this sentence, or by one line. That the will, the mind, the thinking, the action is the word, and that is God, and later he will tell them which is a Christ. So the same was in the beginning with God, which means Genesis chapter one. All things was made were made by him, and without him was not anything made. Now, a person who is reading here for the first time, he might think this is just, uh, you know, about just the word God. Like you see here, it says God. There's nothing here. It says Messiah. We notice that, right? The word is used. It's God. Just God. The word Messiah is not there. Which will make you think that it's just about God, whoever that God is. But then John, for us, for, for us as a Christian, we know who's our, our father, right? But then we see that the same was in the beginning with God. So he was with God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Anyone here is having difficulty so the same was in the beginning with God and that word was with God and the word was God in order to understand this you need to continue reading and then you will find that he is talking about Christ who was from the beginning with the Father Everything was created by him and for him, as we will see later in different verses. So all things were made by him, and without him was nothing, not anything made was, that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then you go, and you will see right away, God let be light. God said, let be light, and light was. Without light, you know, light play, uh, the word light play a huge role or role in, uh, in our belief. You know, God is light. But we are not talking about nature, like, you know, physical, you know, nature of light. God is light mean everything for us is being seen, recognized, uh, we feel is by his light 
for light itself was created by him. Our eyes is made by him. And light here is go far than just seeing things. It goes to all our senses, how we sense, how we see. So in his, in him was life. There's no life was without him. So the source of all life is coming from our Lord. And the life was the light of men. But the life was the light of men. Isn't it light? What needed for the men? What does that mean? And the life was the light of men. When we speak about the Messiah and we speak about the gospel and we speak about uh, 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 the Holy Spirit and we speak about the guidance, we're always speaking about light. By the light of the Lord we see. By the light of the Lord we understand. By the light of the Lord we recognize. By the Messiah we get the light in the middle of the darkness. Without him we get no light. So the light of the man is going to be our Lord who life came from him, he is the source of, or let us say, the beginning of everything. And this light is going to conquer darkness. You know, there is a, uh, if you look at the space, uh, at the sky, I mean, this is a massive uh, universe. You know we have very very massive so how uh, you know how this massive universe massive darkness actually not only massive universe is not killing the light you see a star and according to science they say to you or scientists Whatever years of light and is far away, still the light is coming. So here you see that the light have a power over darkness. The light is not being destroyed by darkness. It's not by cover. It's not covered. Actually, the darkness make the light more clear. So when we have like the sun in the middle of the day, there's many stars, I mean, millions of stars. They disappear, we don't see them, but they are there. Why? Because there's one light taking over, but dark cannot take over. If there is any, uh, anyone don't, if you feel like you, you know, you don't understand something, please let me know. I will be happy to answer. <clears throat> light is very powerful. And light is unique. And light conquer darkness. If you have a room, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of the night, totally darkness. A little match, you know, matches, will conquer all this massive darkness. It's amazing how, how suddenly things disappear in front of us just when light is gone. You know what I mean? Everything will disappear in a second. Turn the light off. You have a massive darkness. Even walls disappear. Nothing can be recognized around you, and you would think yourself, like imagine if somebody put you suddenly, took you somewhere. You do not know where are you. That might be a room. 
you know, two by two meters. If you don't move from your place, you might think you are living in massive land, because you see nothing. You recognize nothing. You are stripped from your, the most important sense you need in life. Now for sure you have your hearing, you have a, a sense of touch, etc. But all of those is to assist you. That's why you see someone who is a blind person, when he loses his sight, those assistant uh, tools like hearing or touch, they will become extremely uh, 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 the main way to recognize things because now he lost his sight. So he have like it's improved. He can recognize things just by steps walking. He can even recognize people to know them if he used to hear them. So a blind man, he have a different way to recognize things because God, he give them ability. For us, here the meaning is way more than just a blind person or somebody who lost his sight. So uh, 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 the Bible is speaking about how the Messiah, he conquered darkness and how the Messiah, he changed everything around us. Anyone have a question? I am confused with John 1 3 and that the five two personal God that share the same sense of divinity God the Father and God the Word, Jesus. That's two divine God, not one. Please explain. No, you see, uh, this is why actually it says, you see, even if you notice that it is the word and then the word and then the word. Do you notice that? And that's mean there's not a divine God. God is one. Not to divine God. The son is not a second God. The son is a son of God, which is the second person. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And this is why the, the same word is repeated, Logos, Logos, Logos. The same was in the beginning with God. Everything created by Him, God. So when we say that everything created by Jesus and for Jesus, we are not talking about second divine. We are talking about God the one God, which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To make it simple, you know, if I say, what's the difference between me and my will? Uh, me and my word? How you know me? You never met me. So, when I spoke my word to you, you did not receive me as a person, you received my word. And that's what happened when we receive the Messiah. When the Bible says, for God, he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. That is his word. So the word is equal to the word, which means the will of God is the will of God. And the will of God became a man. And that man, who is Jesus, he is God in the flesh. So there's no second divine, there's no third divine, there's no fourth divine. And if you say, that God cannot be one person, or sorry, one, uh, one God, and uh, two or three or even whatever person. If you say he cannot be, that's mean he cannot be God because we call him Almighty, for he can whatever he want to be. So when God, he decide, God the Father, he decide to have a light for us, and that light is his son, so he sent his son. But this is not a second, uh, you know, God. 
when you say the word divine and trying to understand from you are you meaning God the Messiah is divine the Father is divine the Holy Spirit is divine but the three is one God all right uh, I hope I did explain to you you know there is there is an example I don't like to use because some Christian they might say to you uh, you are presenting God as object you know but I use it for the one who have a difficulty but we don't mean that this is exactly what God is so if I say that there is a Sun there is a light the Sun which is a star and remember this is an example but this is not the same as our God but just to make you understand better so we have the Sun in the sky and then the Sun does not come to us the Sun is still there then the light of the sky the Sun came to us this is what actually this is how we recognize the Sun if there is no light we will not even see it so there's a Sun in the sky and there's a light come to the earth and that light when it when it touched the earth or touch our body we feel warm but the Sun is the same as the light the same as the heat because all of them the three they are the Sun the Sun without the light is not there for us and if the Sun has not heat and has no heat this mean that's mean there's no light too so this is an example just to show you but our in, in our case our Lord is not the same as the Sun and as the light and as the worm but just to show you how if things can be possible for something object you know it's an object the Sun is a star, a star. Uh, we don't worship stars right but if a star can carry in such a such a way of meaning to us how about God right and if imagine like God is the one who made the the, the Sun right so if if one of his making can do such a thing the Sun is there without coming to us yet the Sun is here coming to us uh, so the Lord who created the Sun and who created whatever suns we have he is you know he is the most powerful and he is the Almighty and the second you say you say that my God is Almighty, it's mean He is Almighty, and nothing, nothing can stop Him from being Almighty. Otherwise, Almighty is not a true. If there is something you cannot do, you know. If there is something, if you are limited. So when when the Bible tried to explain to us uh, about God. Uh, you know the Bible trying to explain to us based in our limited mind too. See, it doesn't matter really how smart we claim to be. Still, we are so limited to comprehend the glorious of God. Remember that. Like when somebody says to me that Jesus, he put some mud on the eye of somebody, and he make him see. This is you know above our comprehend because this is cannot. And this is not really uh, something you can ex ex explain. Can you? When someone says to you that Jesus here resurrected somebody is already dead for some time, that cannot be explained. So if you are trying to explain God really, you are trying to explain a miracle. And this is why John is trying to make it really easy for you so you can understand God with your limitation not the limitation of God you are limited I hope I did answer you so in him was life and life was the light of men without uh, without uh, you know, without life, we are not exist. We are life right now, right? But where the life coming from? Life is coming from the Lord. 
So every source of life is coming from the Lord himself. Everything around us. Every source of life. Without him, there is no life. But specifically now for men, which means us, men and women. The Messiah is the light for all of us. Because without the word of God, we are just a bunch of animals. We eat each other, rave each other, kill each other. And then a few lines from now, you will see more how you understand God. And the light, which go through the darkness, here there's two meanings actually, or more than one meaning. You know, we live today in the world of darkness. For sure we have electricity. But look around, you open the news. Nothing changed from the time of Jesus until now. We are living in the time of darkness. The only light we have is our faith in the Messiah. Otherwise, everything around us is evil. You cannot keep your door unlocked. You need to watch for security. You need to watch for your children. You need to watch for hackers, bank account. Why? Because earth is evil, full of evil. The only hope, the only medication human being he has right now is the light of Christ who can conquer the darkness which we have. So, when the Messiah have a few disciples, those became like light, will carry light of Christ to all nations. And that, that light will grow, grow by us as a church. So this light will conquer, and there's no darkness can comprehend this light. No darkness can kill it. No darkness can, can, can stop it. There was a man sent from God who, whose name is John. Now here, you know, first time for me I was reading the Bible, uh, you know, when I say John, and I'm reading the book of John, so I thought, okay, maybe this is John. He himself is talking about himself, introducing himself. And you might ask yourself, like, why John is even not talking about himself? You know, John, uh, see, in every time, in every time, uh, there is a reasoning for things. You know what I mean? Uh, like, imagine your father, he come to your room and introduce to you that uh, I am your father, and now you are 30 years old. Isn't it too late? I mean, I know that you're my father, right? So John is a very well-known disciple. He is very, very, you know, one of the most, let us say, uh, uh, well-known. So he did not need to introduce himself when he speak. So when he is writing the gospel, he is introducing the one who is not present with the people. You know what I mean? If a Christian prince is speaking to you right now, I do not need to write for you about Christian prince when I am writing for you about what happened in the past to tell you a history you did not witness, but I did witness. So John is a witness. John is not telling a story from a storyteller. John, John is a first-hand witness, and actually he was the only one next to the cross when Jesus was on the cross. Somebody saying no sound. Is that true? I think the sound is working. So, uh, John is a very special person and he was the first-hand witness, and obviously he is an extremely wise person. So John now is introducing for us other John, and this John, he have a reason to be there. So there was a man sent from God, so now it's confirmed that this person is not just a man, he is a man sent 
from God. His name is John. The same came for a witness. So he have a, he have a, he have instruction from God to witness, to bear witness of the light. And here slowly we will understand what which light we are talking about. So there is a man, his name is John, and that is John the Baptist, who came to witness and he was sent by God, so he have a mission. And the mission is to confirm to the crowd who is the Messiah, as we will see soon. So this person, John, John the Baptist, he came to witness, he have instruction from the Lord, and he is going to witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Here you will notice that this light, which is we will see is the Messiah, there is a reason for him to be here, is to believe. You see, he is just not coming just to tell us what is good, what is bad. He is not just coming to tell us, uh, you know, uh, love your enemy, and you know, there is there is way, there is a higher, let us say, mission, is to believe. Because in Christianity, your belief, your belief is your is your way to be saved. It is not uh, making donation. It's not uh, uh, being kind. It, you know, you should be kind, right? Because the Bible speak about you that you know the good deeds is the the fruits of the good tree. You know, good tree give good fruits. So this is a fruit should come automatically from you because you are a believer. But it's not the fruit really the reason for you to be saved. However. A faith without fruits is a dead faith, as the Bible said. Somebody saying, uh, uh, Christian Prince fan channel saying, how the Bible can be true if it was written after centuries after. Well, you know, actually, first of all, John is a first witness. So how it can be learned, uh, written after centuries. This is a claim, you know, false claim. It's, it's just a pure false claim. Uh, because if, if John, he was going to write the Bible after centuries, that's mean he lived for centuries. But John, he is a disciple of Jesus. So how the book will be written, you know? The average of the book of John is written between 60, 60 something after Christ, you know? 60, 70, 80, something like that. So people, they can say, you know, they can say whatever they want, right? And for us, when somebody says uh, the Bible is written in centuries after that, uh, they have to provide the proof. And, you know, it's, this is all just a, their fiction. And this is why you will see, you know, in different places, like, you know, you see always when you want to understand the book of John, maybe I should mention that from the beginning, in order to understand better the book of John, you have to get two books ne next to each other, you know? So you go, you open First John, First John, chapter 1. First John, chapter 1. And when you do that, you will notice uh, how this book is come to existence, let us say, if we can say the word come to existence. So first John is like you are reading the book of John again, but in the form of a letter. In a form of letter. The one in front of us now is in a form of a book. The other one is in the form of a letter. Uh, 
It is actually opening the verses there, and you will see how and why we are saying it's almost they are reading the same. Look, this is First John. This is First John, and then we go back to John chapter one. You are reading the same thing again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We go to First John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of word of life. And here you see that John, he confirmed that he was a real witness of Jesus. Not only he heard Jesus. But he seen and here you will see that John is speaking about we seen with our eyes. So he is speaking of himself and the disciple too. Which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled or touched. So when somebody wanna say this is written, you know, you know, this is, a, you know, are you worried about what people will say really? I'm not really worried. And you know, this is what we do here. Uh, we refute them, we expose their lies, and uh, we don't let it go. But never expect somebody, he is a disbeliever, to say something nice about your belief. Especially if you have a belief trying to take you away to his belief. Like they say, whatever his belief is, you know, without mentioning. So always, uh, a believer should not really be worried about what other people say. He should be worried about what is truth in their saying. All right? Did I answer you? You know, there is a... There is an, there is an in the old days, they used to uh, uh, attack a tribe, you know, some nations, and then they kidnapped the children, and then the children, they convinced them that they are their children. And not only that, like, you know, you are my grandson and the enemy who is Saturn nation, they killed your father. But in fact, the one who is talking to the child, he killed the father of the child. And the child, he is an infant, he don't remember anything. So he grew up and he wanna kill and fight the enemy, which is the one who killed his father. But the fact he is sitting in the lap of the killer. This kind of evil, and instead of losing their sons to fight the enemy in the future, they use your sons to fight you. And this is way what they do, the enemy of Christ these days. So they try to convert your sons, make you or make them believe that you are the enemy of God. That's why Jesus says, "Come, time will come, and People will think by killing you, they are doing favor to God, right? <clears throat> now we continue. If there's any other question about those verses? You notice, like when you have uh, uh, people, maybe do not know that we are here because this account here is small; it's not big. But I hope people will will notice. That's why it's better if you share the link and invite people to join us. So even later, they can watch the video. Uh, not necessarily when we are live. So there was a man sent by God, or from God, whose name was John. And this John, he is coming to witness for a great event is going to happen. He will witness for the light.
not only he will witness for you see here you will see john how he is very very you know powerful in the statement and then now he did not say the word of christ did you notice that People, did you notice that until now he did not even use the word of Christ? There's no Christ. Until now there's no Christ. We are talking about the word, about the beginning, that God is the word, the light, and the light will be for the man, and the light will not be comprehended or destroyed by the darkness. And there's a man is waiting. He have instruction to witness for the light. Until now, we have nothing. We heard nothing except word and light. No Christ yet. So he came to witness for the light. So we might believe in him, who the light. So here you see. Uh, John the Baptist is a very great figure. You know, if you read about him, he was really a powerful person. So, if I am recommended by John the Baptist, it's like I am certified genu a genuine person. You know what I mean? So, he have a great reputation. Actually, I, I did read a lot of about, about John the Baptist to the point even religions who have nothing to do with Judaism and Christianity adopt John the Baptist to be a great teacher. So this person, because he is beloved, because he is a trustworthy, because people believe him to be very, very, very extremely genuine, a messenger of God, he is going to witness for the light of God. Which means that John the Baptist, he is there to prepare the way. <clears throat> we continue. And then, that was the true light, which lighteneth every man that come into this world. So John, he insists that there's no other light except this light for us. Word, the word is God, the light is God, the light of God. And there's one person is witnessing for the, such a light. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. Here you will see John is diving deep into the nature of this light or this person he was going to talk about. He was in the world. He came. He was here. He was real. That's why, you know, in, in John, first John, you know, uh, John, he said, we saw him, we heard him, right? And we touched him. So it's not a fiction. See, you can't really touch light. You can see light. But see light and hearing the light and holding the light is a different story. And all of those is the word of life, which means all life came in from it, and he is the source of all life. This is why it's really important uh, to understand John chapter 1, the gospel, to follow reading, or side by side maybe, when you do Bible study, to go to First John, because you will find yourself reading exactly the same thing, but here, you know, actually here, you know, in, in the time of, uh, of John, there's the Gnostic, I don't know if many, how many of you heard of them, 
who they are saying, uh, you know, they have a heresy. They are saying that uh, Christ, as long as he's God, so, uh, you know, God cannot be, uh, he can, you know, he, a human. Human is like, flesh is evil. Material is evil. So, in their belief, anything is a material is evil. It's bad. It is sin. Flesh is a sin. So how God he took flesh. So those group of people who they are claiming such a thing, that Christ, his flesh was not real. He appeared. And actually this is why you see some foolish prophets who claim to be prophets later. They say that it appeared to them to be the Messiah, if you remember. It appeared to be. He's taking this idea from the diagnostic. So John here is refuting a cult, not only just explaining Christianity, he's refuting a cult who believed that Jesus' flesh was not real, that Jesus the man was not real, that Jesus the God is real, which means his flesh is just an appearance. He's not a flesh of a man like us, for God is holy, this is their belief. So when John was writing the letter, he was refuting them saying, when we saw him, he was, you weren't there. Those who they are talking, they are coming with this idea. He didn't even meet Jesus. So John saying, we don't what? We are the one who saw him. We are the one who experienced him with our eyes. And we are the one who touched him, he touched him for real. We hold him. We looked upon him. So who are you to say to us what you are saying? And that what make the disciple message, and especially here John, is very powerful because he exposed their lies, because they can deceive many. So now which one we will believe? The one who was named by Jesus, and even Jesus, he told him, this is your mother, to Mary, when he was on the cross. So which one we will follow? A person who is a philosopher coming with a new heresy, cult saying Jesus was uh, you know God yes but his flesh was not real or the one who was a witness who Jesus chose him in a very favorable way you see there is a there is a disciples who they are considered universal disciples Universal, the word universal is a, is a word Catholic. Now, Catholic does not mean a church Catholic now, because I know some people, they will go there. Don't go there, please. Catholic means universal. So there is disciples who they are universal. Those are the one who sent to the world. So they are the one who carried the message for the world because they are special with their wisdom. John is one of the universal disciples. Did the Jewish recognize, uh, obviously, they recognize him, you know? You see, that when, you, when we speak about the Jewish, we need to remember who is the Jewish, right? The Jewish is the people or the rabbis or some rabbis. Jewish are Jewish like us. So if you live in a town and there is uh, 10,000 people believe you are a messenger of God and there is 20 don't believe in you, you know? Still, we cannot say the whole town, believe, don't believe. Jewish is a word. You know, we give it to, to uh, people, right? But remember that John himself was a Jew. Paul was a Jew. Several of Jesus, they are Jews, right? So can we say the Jews did not believe in Jesus? No, we cannot. There's a lot of Jews believe in Jesus. Right? <clears throat> And always the rabbis, always the rabbis, they will feel a threat. Like you might see somebody, he claimed to be a Christian. He, he you know, he make videos against me. I mean, what I'm doing, what's wrong I'm doing? You know what I mean? Why? Because there is people who they are fearing. Uh, they have jealousy. Uh, they, uh, you know, they fear that somebody will take their place. 
attention seekers. So they might have a beer, they might call themselves rabbi, but a person who is so decent is a threat. And all of us, we knew that John the Baptist, he paid his life for his decency. So then you ask yourself, what is all the rabbis at that time? How come none of them dare to say to the ruler, how dare you? You know what I mean? So we have a king, he is going to do something horrible. He is going to do something horrible. The city is full of rabbis. You can imagine how many. How come there's only one person is standing for the ruler? Did you ask yourself the question? Only one person. What happened to the rest? What is the rabbis? Obviously, those are rabbis doing business. If you go to Mark chapter 6, you can read some of the story. So how they are going to love such a person? And that is telling you that they are, you know, businessmen. They are not really rabbis. How come they stood to fight Jesus, but nobody stood to fight the ruler, the king? Because they knew if they do, he will chop their head. Very simple. In the best scenario, he will put them in jail. And they favor to keep their mouth shut. So, you know, those rabbis, actually, we see them today. If you are a rich person, you know, even if you are a perverted man, everybody respects you, everybody opens the door for you, everybody call you sir. But if you are a poor man, if you do little sin, you know, they will, they will re rebuke you and they will make an example of you. Right? When somebody is powerful, they go mute. When somebody, you know, suddenly, like, suddenly they are, they are decent. Suddenly they care for washing hands. Suddenly they care for breaking Sabbath. But everything around them was broken. Uh, current warrior, I want you to focus with me, my friend, because I see you are asking questions far away from our topic. I mean, end of time. I, I you know, it, you mentioned this question. I will answer you, but please don't, you know, just focus with us. Don't talk about the end of time, or end of time is God's decision. Those who speak too much of end of time, I can accept that somebody talking about the end of time just to warn you, you know, so to wake up. But when somebody says to you, it's tomorrow, it's here, it is there, this is a fraud. End of time is by the hand of the Lord and leave to the Lord what belong to him. And what people say to you is their own saying. It's not biblical. So we continue here. You know, always, if you understand, like here, the, the, here, there is no story as much as there is introduction for a story. It's a wise man, very wise, inspired by the Lord, introduction to the Messiah. So here we have, he come to his own. And here you notice we were talking about that his own, they received him not. So where is the rabbis? How come the rabbis they could not see? Did you notice that not a single one of those who follow, you know, I mean, the one who recognize the great people like John the Baptist, 
Where is the rabbis? What, what, you know, if, let us say they don't like Jesus. What about John the Baptist? What he did to them? So those rabbis, they are businessmen, and today we have businessmen everywhere, and religion is a business for many, big business. Buy my CD, uh, you know, if you like to, to learn more, subscribe so you can get, uh, uh, like you have a, a privilege of seeing my videos, you know. Uh, if you make a donation, etc., all of it obviously is a business. Like if you go to my Patreon, I have all my videos public. I don't make something private, and I will never do. Because I'm not here to give a privilege to somebody is rich. He give money. I believe that the Lord He will provide me, and I'm very satisfied with that. Whatever come from the Lord, the Lord He send people who they help. And I'm very grateful. But nothing changed in this earth. Everything is still the same. The rabbi at that time, they are businessmen. The rabbi at this time, they are businessmen. And rabbi does not mean just Jews. It can be any religion. It's a, it's a, it's a big business. Hardly you see somebody, he is a religious person, he live in a, you know, I mean, go and see how Jesus lived, how Paul lived, how John lived. I mean, they have a really, uh, I mean, miserable actually, not only hard life. And how those rabbis live, or bishops, villas, cars, palaces, glory, you know, people kissing their hands, you know, your highness, your whatever, you know, they don't even like to call them by their names. You see, we call, we say John. We say John. We say even the Messiah. There's bishops, you have to go and give them a title. You have to show searching frames for them. Otherwise, they might be upset. <laughs> Did John the Baptist learn water baptism from the Sabian? Well, the Sabian, obviously, they copied. This is why they have his name in their book. If you go to the book of Kenza Rabbah, you will see that the Sabian, they consider John the Baptist as a great teacher. But obviously, this has come, come to them, you know, uh, you know, after Christ, and they added to their book. So, uh, they learned from John the Baptist. It's not the opposite. All right? Uh, any other question? All right. If you like me to stop, if things become so too much information, I don't know for how long we are here. I don't know. We are for an hour and nine minutes. Maybe I should stop for today, you know, because I noticed that the more you, the longer you make them, maybe people will not watch, you know. Uh, I'm trying to make my videos shorter so we can get more people to 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 join and you know to you know to learn you know but always remember we like we will stop here but the easiest way always to learn the the, the gospel is not to read the, the book but to live it maybe in the story here is just a, it's just words philosophy but soon later you will find there is a story you know about people talking he is saying she is saying so the best way always to understand what happened is to live the story, not to read the story. You know, there are some people, they are gifted, they have a great imaginary you know, brain, which means they can connect words to images immediately. It's like creating a movie in your, in your head. Uh, 
The Bible is not a word to read, it is a word to live. And if you cannot live the word, then you read nothing. Because what's the point of reading something and you don't, this word is not affecting you, you know, nothing changes your life. So if you are a person just reading, just for the sake of reading and nothing changes in your life, well, you know what? That's mean you are not interested and you don't really want this book to help you in anything. Maybe you are reading it just uh, for little education. Maybe you are reading it just to attack the Christians, to speak negative about them. Uh, maybe, maybe. But if you are a believer, then you should uh, try to live the word and try to understand what we are talking about. And you know, for me, first time I opened the Gospel of John, I was really amazed about how, you know, I, you know, for me, I am, since I was a kid, I, I like to think deeply. I don't like to read things like shallow, you know, just observe the heavy weight of this teaching. This is a very heavy weight in the same time is very smooth and very easy to observe. You can observe it if you are a person who have degrees and you can observe it if you are a farmer who not know how to read, how to write. You enjoy it no matter who you are. It's, it's written in a very beautiful way. And actually, you know, if you read this uh, sentence here, just the first, you know. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So imagine yourself, you know, when you were created, you are created by the Word of God. And somehow, you are a priceless creation because simply your life is given to you from God. So your life is coming from the Holy One. The beginning of everything is a holy beginning. So if you consider yourself created by the Word of God, and the Word of God is God Himself. Then you notice that holiness should be your lifestyle, and you are really a very lucky person. For God, He created you in His image. You are not a tree. You are not a cat. You are not a rat. You are created in the image of the Lord himself. So for sure, the Lord, he made you for a good purpose. And then you need to ask yourself, what good purpose is on me? Where I am right now? How bad, how good, how filthy, how sinner, how guilty. How hateful, how loving, how giving, how greedy. So here actually, you know, even though we are not going deep inside the Bible, but you will see from the beginning, the source of life is the Holy Lord himself. And your life is given to you. And the light, the Lord himself is coming to you. To serve you. That's why here where it says, in him was life, which means in him, you, you came to existence. In him, in his life, in his power, the light came to existence to the men, the disciples, whoever going to preach the gospel. So you are in the, in the center of the interest of the Lord, to the point he sent his only begotten son. So you will see Christianity is different, diff totally different from any belief. When somebody says to you, Christians, they copy from this religion and this religion, this is absolutely false because there is no other belief. 
make God a servant to the one who is worshiping him. You know what I mean? I mean, he's God. You should worship him. You should bow down to him. He can kill you. He can destroy you. He can send you to hell. You will see Christ is coming to you in different approach. I love you. And this is what we will see later. Because later we will see that John, he introduced to us God in a way nobody introduced it in any belief ever. None. And I challenge when I say none. When we continue reading, you know, and we will see how he spoke about love, how we can even recognize God. How we recognize God? Who is, who is this God? I mean, things became complicated then. You will see that God is love. God is love. So this God who is love, he don't want from you anything except to be loving. Can't you? I mean, look how simple what this, uh, you don't want you to do, you know, uh, like some other religions to do some kind of stuff. And, you know, you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this to satisfy me. You have to be a loving to others. They don't even ask you, like, okay, love me, worship me, you know. He is not being the center of, you know, of, of, of like, this is why when he came, he washed the feet and the disciple could not believe it. Why in the world do you want to wash our feet? I mean, you, you are our Lord. And then the Messiah, he said to them, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. In order to be a master, you have to be a servant. You cannot be a master unless you are a servant. And this is why if we go to John, First John, chapter 4, you will see it says here, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is God, is of God, and everyone that his love, you know, he loves is born of God and known God. So, if you do not know what love is, you do not know God, you are not born of God, you are just born in the flesh like every, every creature. So, the nature which Christ, he wanted us to be with, additional to be just a human in the flesh, is to be a nature of, godly nature, to be loving. Love of God, love one another. He that loves not, knows not, God, or God is love. Look how powerful. This is why, for me, I find that John, you know, the Lord, he inspired him when he wrote. And it's an extremely, extremely simple and extremely powerful. How I can explain God to anyone? I mean, God Almighty, you can't explain God. But he did. And then in John, John, 1 John chapter 4, you will see this is a letter of love. It's powerful, it's amazing, it's astonishing. And actually, I advise you all of you to read carefully 1 John chapter 4, because that can help you a lot in your social life, even your family. You know, the problem today that all of us, we are very selfish and we focus in ourself. And the more you focus on yourself, you focus in something against love. 
because you became selfish. Love, you see, right away he says, "Be loved. Let us love one another." So the love he's talking about is not about you loving yourself. If Jesus, our Lord, he loved himself, he will not give himself. And so go to the disciples. All of them, they sacrifice their life. For love is God, so when you are really in love, you know really God. So John, he summarized for us, what is God without meeting him yet? We did not meet him in person. I wasn't with the, with the Messiah. You were not with the Messiah. He was with the Messiah. So he speaks from first experience. He'd been touched by his love. He'd been changed by his love. And now the wisdom he have is the wisdom of love, which is given to him from the Lord. Those few lines can change the life and even the future of many. Even your relationship with your wife, your children. And we will go on later to, to, to study this chapter here because I believe it's very powerful and it's very important for us to learn it. But you notice, like in order to understand a person, uh, in the case of the person we are talking about is the Lord himself. Actually, the word person, by the way, is not a good description to say the Lord, but this is the English. I don't know. My English is my, you know, English is, my English is limited, as you know. You know, in Arabic, we say, Oknum, Oknum, like, uh, uh, I don't know how to translate it in English. You know, it's, it's not person. It's more powerful than the word person. Uh, but, you know, sometimes languages dictate what to say. Because sometimes languages, compared to other languages, are limited. So, for sure, a Greek language is way more uh, rich than English. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually, in, in a Greek word, in the Greek, I think it says Arab. Arab? I, I forgot really the Greek word. Um, Ar Arabi. Arabi. Or Agabi. Agabi. You know, something like this. So it is not just love. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a love which, you know, uh, like let us say, extremely powerful, extremely deep, extremely rooted, you know. Uh, it is extremely. Uh, connected it's not just something temporarily you feel and it goes it's not like a love maybe you have for a woman you will see a person he love a woman for maybe a year or two or even ten and then he hate her what happened this love is a permanent and it is eternal it's going to be forever so if you are with the Lord you know what love means and you will never go step back the way you used to be. Hate will not conquer you. Hate will not take you down. You want to go backward. So it's like you're washing yourself from what you used to be or what we are now. You will not understand what love is until you are in love. Uh, anyway, I think we had we exceed our limit. It's uh, an hour and twenty four minute. Uh, you tell me for how long I should make my video. You know, uh, give me the advice so we can get more audience. I believe long videos. Maybe it's not. It's not uh, people. They are. You know, they don't have maybe time to watch such a long video. I will. You know, leave your comment and tell me what you advise us to do advise me to do so I will stop today I hope I hope we you know we cover a little bit of John chapter 1 even though I don't think I covered anything really because this is way deep the, the only way to cover it is to live it the only way to cover to understand how 
uh, who, and what is the word is to live it and to be in love with it and then you enjoy it better you know if you go to the class to learn mathematics and you hate mathematics the class will be so long so boring right but if you are in love with mathematics you enjoy it it's fun for you maybe it's horrible for someone else you like it it's fun it's a joy what about knowing the Lord so the Bible is not a mathematics it's not one plus one plus one as some they say the Bible is you plus love plus knowledge plus living which means you end with the living of the Lord so you are there you are part of the story this story may be speaking about the Messiah, but you are there for the Messiah is coming to you. You are there for life is you. And he gave you life. And the life you have is his life. You are in the story. The story is not only about Jesus. The story is about you. So the more you feel that you are in the story and you are the purpose of the story, the more you enjoy the story because you will notice that is a story here is exists for me. There's billions of a human being, but this story is for every one of them. And it is not a story. It's a living word of God. So the Messiah for me is the living, walking, talking word of God. This is why the Bible says, in the beginning it was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we are enjoying the Messiah, even though we will not exist when he come to the earth in the flesh. So I hope I was able to give you some insight with my limited, humble understanding. As you know, I'm not a priest, I'm not a bishop. I don't have degrees in the Bible, I don't claim to, to be. But uh, this is my own search and my own study through my lifetime. And I try my best you know, to express with my limited English. This is why actually I don't, I don't like much to talk about the Bible in English because I find myself very limited in the way I want to say things because my words is very limited. Sometimes there's things you want to say, but what you can do, you have to use certain words because you have none except those words, what you can do, you know. Uh, but I believe that the Lord always, he can give us the way to understand, even if someone like me trying to explain to you in a language is not his first language, you know, he, he will be able to deliver, not me, to deliver to you my idea in the way I wish I can do better. So I want to say thank you for being here. And don't forget to subscribe if you care. And as you see, this is our new channel for the Bible. And I'm so happy, actually, that finally I'm talking about a topic I don't hate topic will not make me feel you know i mean i don't know disgusting uh, you know i feel like i need i need a break it's a topic which make me make me feel clean you know even though i'm not because all of us we are sinners we get tempted we do sin we speak good we do bad uh we you know we, we wanted to be uh, something and we end to be something else uh, we confess our sin not because we are proud of it but because we are brave and we've been encouraged by the Lord to be honest about who we are so we will not have uh, you know faces of who we are the Bible says that there is only one good that is the Lord only one none is good so the good God, I pray, he will open the eyes of people to see that God is love. And if you know love, you will know Jesus. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And until we see you again next time, and I will let you know when we'll go in Patreon. Uh, I will publish one is going to be the second uh, life teaching the Bible. And I uh, will be happy to meet you again. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon. Take care.